on the Woodhall to Kiwani area. Uh, very, very strong winds there. And while it starts in Kiwani, it will continue for a while as well. Looking right now as we zoom in toward Hanover and Elizabeth right now. Look at the hail uh, that is coming down pretty sizably right now. Uh, we are continuing to see very, very strong winds here into the metro area. Looking back here at the metro at the velocities as we see them right now still ranging uh, and these are Doppler indicated very close to the radar site too and when we're getting these numbers I mean very close to the radar it tells us that the damage is continuing in the metro area at 207. So while we are tracking these uh, storms off toward Kiwani and Princeton and Sterling Rock Falls we're continuing to get the damage here. So as it starts for you uh, areas to the east it's going to last for quite a long time, um, and this is quite a significant storm system as it moves through the area. Normally, these types of storms, uh, they just blow through and blow out, but you can see here's the gust. So the gust comes through and then you've got all this wind that is coming down from the back side of the storm. So it's just dumping the air right down below it to fill the void of that upward momentum that we had earlier on. And so that's why we're continuing to see problems. And this is going to kind of take out probably a lot of power for many of us as we head through the next um, uh, I dare I say a day or so <laughs> you know, or even more than that. I just uh, noticed here, Iowa City, uh, close to 16,000 people without power, customers without power in Iowa City. Just Iowa City alone. Uh, on the Quad Cities, Iowa side, uh, about uh, just over 1,400. Right now on the Illinois side in the Quad Cities, um, just about 167 uh, customers without power. But likely those numbers will be increasing. We actually have been seeing those numbers slowly increase in some of those major towns and cities uh, west uh, west of us and slowly making our way eastward. So even though the numbers may be small in the immediate quad cities, I think that number is going to continue to climb uh, even higher, not just the winds that already passed down through, but the continuous winds, as Eric just mentioned, that are still going on. I just looked outside. Not much rain is falling, but there is still a tremendous amount of wind gusts that we are getting uh, from this storm as it continues to make its way around the viewing area. I think that's what, like a Two, uh, one hour loop, I would say. That's a one hour loop. Yes. One hour loop alone. You can see with our wind velocity uh, how the, uh, uh, the raindrops are moving toward, which is in that blue, and then moving away from the radar, which is your red, or in this case, uh, yellow and orange, as that makes its way from west to east. So when I was in pretty me impressive. meteorology school, the way I remembered this is the red moving away are yes. the taillights. Are the tail? <laughs> oh, yeah. There the green go. are the headlights and the red are the taillights. So uh, for those novice meteorologists out there, when you see the red on the velocity, those are the, re those are the taillights. So that's the storm moving um, away from us. And you can see it's moving away from the radar site right now in Geneseo to Kiwani. But um, all of this, as you can see here, I'm going to get the live right now. All of this here, as is the, this yellow and orange, is strong wind that will continue for 70 mile per hour wind for a half hour or more. Okay, so that's going to take down a lot of trees and power lines because these trees and power lines are going to be battered um, with this type of wind for a half hour or more. We're still seeing that here um, uh, at uh, News 8 and we got the beginning of the storm about an hour ago. So this is going to continue for us um, as we look through the next, I'm, I'm hoping that this uh, lets up. And, and one of the reasons why is you can see here that the worst of the storm, the, that rising motion is working off to the east. So Hoopole to Anawan right now, um, there's less rising motion out here, all right? Uh, so we'll continue to monitor that and hopefully the wind will subside. Now, I, having said that, look at this. New severe thunderstorm warning. Now, to get your bearings, this right here is in northern Missouri. But when we animate this, guys, this is moving toward Burlington and Keokuk and Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. And so to track this stuff, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our tracker 
All right, and bring us to the north and the east. So we may continue to see severe thunderstorms. Burlington to Mount Pleasant, 3 3 30. Right now on the clock, it's 2 11. So we're going to have a little bit of time to go, but I think these cells down here to the south are probably right. going to remain to the south of the Quad Cities. I would say so, yeah. And got a nice little vort to go with that as well. So that's an indication. Uh, let's go back to that just real quick. Yeah. That's just an indication right there, because if you put this into motion, you can see a little spin that's taking place right here. Um, that's a, uh, indication that uh, this could be a, a long-lasting event. Now, whether it remains severe as it makes its way in the southeastern Iowa, that's going to be uh, in question. We'll see how well, the uh, data that we have out of here as far as, um, you know, the, sustain, the winds that are going with it. But there's still good storm energy with it. Likely there's some pretty good shear to go with it as well, as you can see, uh, feeding its way into that storm. So uh, likely that's going to continue east, north and east and uh, could very likely produce a, an extended portion of that warning. We'll see how that turns out. But uh, those are the two main ingredients, folks. If you to have, you gotta have both. If you have only have one and not the other, then your chance of seeing a lengthy period of severe weather is, is gonna drop dramatically, okay? Not the case that we have here. We got all the ingredients here. The only thing that we are not seeing is any uh, type of uh, surface base shear all the way aloft to produce any type of significant tornado activity. But given the winds that we're dealing, even though they may be straight line, it's enough to do damage. And that's why uh, we have all these warnings are going on. It's amazing how it's, now we got warnings just west of the Chicagoland area because of this uh, line that is moving around 70 miles an hour or so. So keep in mind, even though um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the strong winds you may be feeling in areas around Galesburg and Princeton, you may be feeling those right now, the wind field still goes all the way back across the river. So as um, Eric mentioned, this could go on for maybe an extra hour with these wind gusts that could be topping at least over 60 miles an hour. So that's going to be the big, big concern uh, that we have here. Andrew, I was just curious, been pretty quiet over there. I'm a little worried. Uh, <laughs> I know you've been getting your, your collage together with some of the videos and photos that has been uh, coming in from some of our viewers. And we appreciate some of our viewers uh, sending in some of that information. Always very helpful as far as what's been really taking place from the storms that made its way through the area and the potential they could be seeing for our viewers even farther east of those storms. Yeah, it appears uh, I'm, I'm keeping in contact with several of my friends that are in the Sterling Rock Falls area as this is plowing through there now. They're saying the wind is really picking up in Rock Falls, uh, starting to see some power outages uh, in that part of town. Uh, also looking through our Facebook live chat too as we're there, a lot of you telling us what's going on, uh, saying no power in Northwest Davenport, Kelowna also without power, no power power in bluegrass earlier uh, where a friend was telling me things were really starting to escalate with some very strong winds there earlier. Uh, also some other comments uh, saying that uh, the lightning has been prolific in some areas, uh, especially up in uh, parts of Joe Davis County. Uh, they've had several close uh, strikes, uh, Lanell says there, uh, near Elizabeth. Uh, also power still out in northwest Davenport. Some new storm reports that are coming in, uh, a measured wind gust of uh, 80 mile, 85 miles an hour rather on the uh, I-74 bridge. Apparently there's a weather station on the uh, bridge project there and that has measured a wind gust of 85 miles an hour. Also seeing some significant tree damage just down from the station here. Uh, I believe that is at the Motel 6. I believe that's down there near South Park Mall. Uh, saying that there's significant tree damage uh, on that stretch there too. So very strong winds continuing to barrel through here. Uh, and, and it still amazes me how you can hear the wind howling and how many minutes ago uh, was it that we just had this storm initially move through. It's been at least, what, a good half hour or so that we've still been seeing these strong sustained wind speeds of probably 50 to 60 miles an hour yeah. higher. Uh, Jim Mertens in Northwest Davenport reports uh, he's got lines down um, in his yard, eight limbs down, one's on the deck. He's heard thumps on the roof. Um, and so that's probably um, uh, similar to what a lot of folks are dealing with here right now as these storms move through damaging straight line winds but it's not just a gust of wind it's a gust of wind and then it just keeps going mm -hmm. listen to yeah. that it just doesn't let up it's just this constant. Is, this it's is been an pounding and pounding and pounding in the past hour here it's and, amazing um, uh, one thing that we can tell you right now um, here at 15 minutes after the hour i want to go to live doppler radar you can bring this full screen what i'm going to do is take off the radar and tell you that um, while we still ha i can you uh, find out andrew I, do we are, have a high wind warning i mean it seems odd that the severe thunderstorm warning for the quad cities is over even though that the wind is howling outside, 
Um, that's kind of odd to me. I was going to say to folks at home that we can give the all clear for the Quad City metro area. However, I still believe that there's going to be some strong winds. Yeah, and, and they have uh, expired they, that warning, as you can see by the map there. And just looking for the communication, the National Weather Service, uh, no new alert or anything issued. But yeah, you look at the velocity data, which we're putting on your screen right now. Uh, look um, at some of the wind gusts still to the west yeah. of the Quad City. So I'm going to get in touch with them really quick and see if there's any so plans here. I, you know, I don't. I want to stop short at saying um, that we can give the all clear. Um, consider that the wind is going to continue for a while. Um, this is going for Stevenson and Eastern Joe Davies County until 2:30. Severe thunderstorm warning eastern Clinton County uh, through Carroll and Whiteside County till 245. Heading down to Henry and Bureau County until 3 o'clock. Severe thunderstorm warning for you. Knox County until 230 and then down here to McDonough County until 230. These thunderstorms have a history of producing near 100 mile per hour winds and they will continue to move toward the east. So heads up for areas east of us heading to the I-39 corridor by about 230 uh, this afternoon. Uh, uh, but we continue to see heavy rain and thunder and lightning mm -hmm. and even another. Uh, looks like this one may be weakening just a little bit working into northeastern Missouri. Let's hope so because right. that has a beeline for us. We hope it weakens. It probably will. The atmosphere's got to be worked over, I think. You would think so. I mean, but more importantly, hey, you're going to get some nice rain out of this as well, which is going to be uh, a bonus for a lot of people who would just love to see uh, a good drenching in their uh, backyards, but mostly uh, some of the farmers. I had some reports from for, uh, farmers uh, this morning. Now, they're not all excited about all the winds. Of course, we have to be worried about some of the crops that are out there, the corn crops, but I know that they were looking for some nice rain, and uh, certainly I think you, you, uh, you are going to get it, uh, at least compared to what we've been seeing in the past couple of weeks or so. But I think you were just showing, can we get the rainfall amounts or a potential, what we estimates again? This is in the past couple of hours. You can see where we have the yellow and the orange. These are estimates. Anytime you see that, that's at least a good inch of rain that has been taking place around, looks like Route 30 and points northwards. Sounds like we've got sirens going off is again. Is there another, are they, up, um, are they updating that uh, warning? No warning that I can see, no. Well, Which unless that's the emergency surprising. manager watching News 8 where we say that the threat is not over yet mm -hmm. and we still got right. the winds and we still have that potential here into the metro quad city. So we want you to be on guard. We want you to be indoors away from windows. We've got thousands of you that are watching on our social streams and at WQAD.com right now, in addition to our nonstop coverage, which has been going on for uh, more than an hour right now. Uh, to repeat what's going on, we have severe thunderstorms that are moving through the area. Uh, we've been tracking these uh, since this morning. Uh, we had 100 mile per hour winds around Marshalltown earlier on, uh, some 90 mile per hour winds even in our metro area as that continues to push to the east. And a reminder here, as severe weather moves through, um, it can cause obviously damage. Uh, and I'm going to go back to this because it's been a while since we talked about the uh, potential for damage uh, from 100 mile per hour winds. It goes off the scale here. When we talk about uh, a 60 mile an hour wind is, is classified as severe, where you can get uh, trees uprooted and power lines down. But then you talk about 70 to 80, where mobile homes could be overturned. We have had reports of 90 to 100. So if a mobile home was in the right spot and took a wind gust from the side, it could be overturned at 90 or 100 miles per hour. Windows are blown out, sturdy structures are damaged at 80, and here we are at um, uh, in dealing with 100. And so that's what we've got to pay close attention to, especially for those areas that are out ahead of the storm into north central Illinois. And here's the beginning of it. Um, keep in mind that what we do have is uh, the air, the wind, it can begin before the rain. When it moved into the Quad Cities about an hour ago, we had uh, kind of an old fashioned dust storm move through the area. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> really impressive. Actually. Yeah, dangerous winds coming through Dixon now shortly. Harmon down to Walnut into Princeton right now, damaging wind. But what is really incredible, um, and I don't remember seeing this before, is you have strong wind that continues from Princeton all the way uh -huh. to Kelowna. Yeah, it's just constant. I mean, it's, all it's, the way. It's like a hurricane it outside is. right now. It really is. Um, in Kiwani and Galva and Cambridge and Hoople. And mm -hmm. I have no idea what this means for power outages. I have no idea um, what this means for 
Right. Um, for trees and power lines being down. I mean, down. the only reports that we've been getting, Eric, simply has been, uh, it's up, let's see, it's updated a little bit here, but on the Iowa side and the media quad cities, um, 1,600 uh, customers without power. Iowa City, 16,000 people without power, given the small size of that. And then on the Illinois side, at least for now, and I do believe that's going to change, uh, well, over 300 customers are without power. That is going to change given the winds that have been coming from this storm, widespread wind gusts uh, around 60, 70, even over uh, 80 miles an hour. So uh, likely we are going to be dealing with some power outages, not just for the day, but this could be lasting for several days in some rural areas uh, um, because uh, of the extent of the winds that have been taking place. Wind Good velocity news. showing That's that. coming down. Right, still going down in areas from Dixon, Iowa, all the way up to Clarence. Strongest of the winds, just covering all of Henry County. That's that. just amazing. And heading its way down to northern I, Knox County. I don't remember ever seeing anything like that. No, because usually it's like, you know, a half a county size when we usually see these uh, winds that take place. Uh, but this is certainly a very widespread event. Even as far north as Propest down, all the way down near, looks like near Brinkfield. That's just northwest of Peoria. So uh, extremely rare that we are seeing these type of conditions taking place, seeing these extreme uh, winds that are going on throughout the Illinois side here from I-80 to I-80 quarter all the way down to uh, I-74. You just don't see that unless you're experiencing like a, a hurricane event uh, like they do usually see in the Gulf Coast states. So pretty impressive that we're seeing uh, these numbers coming from this storm and it quickly advances its way off to the east. There's still some activity on the backside of this system, but nothing that's producing any type of the winds that we have been dealing with. Uh, what's going to be uh, probably going to be talking about here going the evening hours is maybe some clusters of some showers and thunderstorms. Nothing severe, but maybe some nice rainfall, given that we're trying to rinse all this very warm and very humid air. Just so juicy and just rinsing that out. So even though this storm is, has produced a good amount of rain, we're still seeing uh, the effects of still some leftover uh, humidity uh, from earlier on that's being rinsed out in portions of the Hawkeye State as that continues to make his way off to the east. One of the things that I want to do, James, yes. is uh, take it, um, and, and, and I don't want to blow this out of proportion, but um, it's something that we do, what to do after a tornado. And we have this um, graphic built for a worst case scenario. Um, and I think we don't know right now what is going on in some hometowns. And if you're watching us on social media, um, we want you to remain calm. If you've got damage and it's significant in your neighborhood, pace yourself, listen carefully, deal with the urgent situations first. Uh, if your building is damaged, you have to get out of the building. Um, uh, sometimes I have uh, come upon tornado damage and there are gas leaks. You forget about that. Then the fire mm -hmm. department shows up and says there's gas lines. Uh, treat all power lines as live. Um, if you are working in any damaged areas, wear long pants, long sleeves, sturdy shoes, um, take photos of damage for insurance claims. Uh, these are all very important things and also do what authorities tell you to do. Even though this is not a tornado event, we have had so much damage around the area in many of your neighborhoods. It may look like a tornado here for today. Rounding out severe thunderstorm warnings that continue. I think the best thing to do in this situation is to turn off the radar and you really get kind of get a scope of where this is uh, from southern Wisconsin. Uh, uh, getting in toward the uh, collar counties of Chicago. Uh, look at that 1.4 million in that severe thunderstorm warning for the 90 mile an hour winds. And you can see for DeKalb and even into Princeton and Kewanee back down to Peoria, 471,000 people uh, in that particular severe thunderstorm warning. So we're not the only ones. The thing that uh, concerns me at this point is if you have so many people without power um, and this storm that continues to rock its way to the east, um, we're going to it's going to take a long time before we get that power restored. Unfortunately, um, let's go over to Andrew, who's been monitoring the National Weather Service and what you are saying to us 
um, with respect to social media. So what have you got going on right now, 25 minutes after two? Now I've got a lot of people chiming in uh, from Kiwani saying some significant tree damage. Also, mm. power is out for uh, much of town. Same story for Burlington power uh, out for much of Burlington at this time. Um, also looking at some other reports coming in. Uh, looks like power is out uh, in East Moline off of Kennedy Road. I've been watching some more uh, wind gust reports come in too at this time that have been coming in uh, from the National Weather Service, including a wind gust um, of looks like where was it? I just lost my place. There it is, Eldridge. So this was near uh, Eldridge, multiple trees down uh, hmm. with very strong winds. Also near Oak Grove, this is in Rock Island mm -hmm. County, uh, a wind gust of 60 miles an hour. So we're still seeing those winds howl, uh, though it appears maybe just in the last few minutes, it may oh, finally start to be tampering down a little bit here. Yeah, there's still some wind. I just took a look outside. There's still some wind taking place. Uh, still some uh, nice rain that's going on. Uh, but the worst of the winds, it appears, <laughs> Just by uh, outside uh, here in Moline is that the worst of the winds are, are over with, but still uh, windy nonetheless. And that, that's going to continue on at least for a little bit longer for the immediate Quad Cities. But uh, keep that in mind. The, the strongest of the winds, mainly on the Illinois side, as you can see, right just west of uh, right now around the Rockford area and then trending its way all the way down into Macomb. That's where the strongest winds are going on. This is an area where you're getting about at least 60 mile an hour winds. Some gusts may be even higher, maybe around 90 miles an hour as that swiftly makes its way off there. to the east. And That's even, outside yeah, of our coverage area, but right around Lake you know, Geneva, it, it I believe, could, right? It, yeah, right over the Beloit area. Um, but um, you know, it could be worse, I suppose. And we're not dealing with that. However, in some neighborhoods, it may look like a tornado has come through. We have seen no evidence of any rotation in our coverage area here for late this morning and early this afternoon as the storms continue to move to the east. One of the things, even though we've got wind, um, we look at the lightning data to determine um, where we have storms that are strengthening or where they are weakening, and you can see that the the worst of the lightning now continues to push to the east um, so that we may start to see things calm down just a little bit heading into the next uh, hopefully hour or so um, yeah. and then we can see where we go from here on you know on picking up the pieces that sort of thing outside right now Moline um, you can certainly see um, it appears that there's <laughs> a lot of wind that's still, still got shading by the still camera got some rain, yeah. just had a report over in the Clinton um, municipal airport of um, a wind gust of 74 miles an hour. That just came in about uh, just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, and that's still happening yeah. um, mm -hmm. across the metro area here. Um, we go to the Davenport Eagle Eye. Um, this camera may uh, kind of blip on us from time to time because we use a microwave signal between the station and Davenport and it's it's held uh, so that's really good you can see here 87 I think that's an old report to be honest with you guys it could be <laughs> I would say probably. I don't think it's still 87 degrees in Davenport how I about think, we go to the Moline Eagle Eye I know I think sure the temperature certainly has fallen from 87 someone's saying it's 87 somewhere <laughs> it's 67 <laughs> at the Quad City Airport you see the most recent report a sustained wind of oh, 56 wow. miles wow. per hour you don't see that very often not under sus current condition. <laughs> not a sustained at 56. That is uh, for certain. Severe thunderstorm watch continues for our area until 7 o'clock. More than likely, this is going to be kind of peeled back mm -hmm. as the storms weaken just a little bit going through the next couple of hours. And I would say we probably had about a good quarter, half an inch of rainfall, maybe slightly higher around places like around Highway 20. I've had over an inch of rainfall and it continues to rain. Amazing what some of the history we've been getting from this storm starting early in the morning, well before mm -hmm. sunrise, uh, just west of the Hawkeye State and then quickly advancing his way eastward. All the icons that you see here not only reporting some hail, uh, which is very few, but we're getting wind damage reports. We're getting some wind gust reports. Here's a great example uh, right around Marietta, about a 55 mile an hour wind gust over at the Galesburg Airport, just over 50 miles an hour and at the regional airport over in Burlington, uh, around 60 miles an hour. So these are reporting all the wind gusts that have been going on courtesy uh, of these little icons. That's a wind gust icon that we have here. Others that we have are like a wind damage icon that we see. We've got several of them right around the immediate quad cities. Uh, Eric, let's go ahead and pop a couple of those up and we can get an idea 
<laughs> exactly what kind of reports that we've been getting. These are either coming from chasers or some uh, tr um, uh, viewers themselves that are p reporting some of the wind gusts. Nothing in detail that we're getting uh, from this, but wind damage reported around Coe Valley. That's just south and east of the Quad Cities, and even around Davenport and Bentendorf reporting uh, some of the wind damage as well, likely from tree limbs that are down, power outages, maybe some of these tree limbs even blocking some of the roadways in and around town. So that's probably what we're getting with some of these reports, but impressive wind gusts that we have been seeing uh, with these gusts over 60 miles an hour, some areas even higher than that. And uh, that has been certainly the history of this storm making its way now on the Illinois side. So we're gonna likely see more of these little icons begin to pop up, indicating some of the wind damage as well as some of the wind reports uh, that has There's been taking place. six hours of the loop as the that storm is pretty moved impressive. across. I don't know you can actually do a loop on when it comes to those storm reports. Uh, in addition to that, we can put the <coughs> radar on as the reports were coming in. And you can see uh, we don't have too many reports on the uh, uh, Illinois side right now. You can see how they kind of go away. There's a reason for that is the National Weather Service has kind of lost a little bit of their incoming communication. Right. They can still forecast the storms. They have the ability to put out the statements and the warnings and talk with us and we can talk with them, but they're not able to get the reports in. So that's why you're seeing how um, once it gets to the uh, uh, Mississippi River, we're not getting as many on the Illinois side. I don't want you to think that the storm is weakened because it has moved away. Um, it is still quite strong in that area right now. So uh, once again, severe thunderstorm warnings, lots of them east of the metro area and east of the river right now. But we do know for those of you around Kiwani and Galva and Galesburg, it is really windy outside right now. And we want you to be indoors away from windows until those storms pass. That's your best bet. Nobody should be out on the roads. We've had semis that have overturned um, in many spots here with these types of storms. And uh, so that's what we're dealing with right now. Uh, looking right now at Grand Detour um, down toward uh, Dixon hit hard right now with very heavy rain and also some uh, uh, wind. Also, we're seeing that down toward Princeton. Let's go down to street level right now into Princeton and you can see how heavily it is raining now uh, and uh, moving in from the west. So I 80 really hard to travel on right now, especially considering that we do have the potential for overturned trucks. Nobody should be out on I 80. Why not hit? pretty hard right now and the strong winds now working in toward the LaSalle Peru area. But back here toward the Quad Cities, it's getting a little bit better. And with respect to the um, the warnings that we have, those continue off to the east of us right now. Once again, we'll continue to uh, keep you monitored on all this uh, severe weather that is taking place across our viewing area. Once the threat is all said and done, that we will certainly go back to programming if we do have the power to go back to programming. But uh, that's going to be our role, folks, because we still are dealing with this line. Uh, even though it may be quieting down around the immediate Quad Cities, our viewers are still want uh, information, update information as to uh, the severity of this line as it continues to make its way off to the east. We know we're packing winds over 60, 70, even 80 miles an hour as it continues to make its way eastward. We know we're getting a lot of reports of power outages, tree that are down as well. Um, very much almost a, a very common situation that we had uh, back in what 1998 when we had that derecho that made its way in the early morning hours uh, around the immediate quad cities. Uh, kind of the same feature that we are kind of dealing with here with those same wind gusts. It wasn't so much the rain or any tornadoes that were reported. It was some just intense straight line winds that made its way across the area producing numerous power outages, numerous uh, trees that were down, old trees, some that were close to 100 years old, uh, that made its way through the immediate Quad Cities, so almost a similar pattern. And this is usually a time of the year that we are dealing with these storms that um, produce strong wind gusts, not so much as far as tornadoes or even large hail. So uh, that's kind of what we're dealing with with this system uh, as it continues to make its way uh, off to the east. You can still see some activity popping up in areas around southeastern Iowa, nothing severe, but we are getting some very beneficial rain from all this activity as it makes its way uh, in our neck of the woods and likely will continue that chance of wet weather uh, as we go at least until the early evening hours until we dry out because once all this blows on by, then we're back to some seasonal temperatures temperatures for Tuesday and Wednesday before we kind of warm up those numbers later on in the week and with the, the chance for some more showers and thunderstorms that will very likely be taking place as we hit the upcoming weekend, likely as we get to sometime on Saturday. It's far off, 
course, we take a look at trends and things, things like that to see how that's all going to uh, shape up. But uh, right now, that looks like will be our next wave of wet weather heading the upcoming weekend. This is a six-hour loop showing the storms as they develop just around the uh, Iowa, South Dakota, Nebraska border. And you can see how that particular part of the uh, storm is the one that we've been watching ever since Good Morning Quad Cities, holding its own, had the right ingredients to work with that sustain it for a long period of time and will continue to do so. It will make its way right through the, uh, the uh, Chicagoland area in the next hour or so and will continue that eastward movement going into uh, tonight for portions of northern Indiana and even around the lower peninsula of uh, Michigan. Here's the future radar indicating about three hours in advance and it did a very good job in as far as handling all this and it will continue to make his way off to the east, like we said, with some of the heavy rain that has been going on. Andrew is just raising his hand <laughs> proudly because we've got some in more information from Andrew. What do you got for us, Andrew? Yeah, we've got some new pictures and even some new video coming in uh, from some of our photographers and uh, reporters that are out in the field at this time. Uh, I want to take you to Max 1 if we can, and I'll show you some of those uh, pictures. We've got an overturned semi. This is at the US 61 and I-80 interchange. Uh, looks like it's blocking some traffic there, uh, courtesy of one of our News 8 photographers, some strong winds. Some more uh, video coming in. This is mm. from our own Denise Hanitka at her uh, location here oh, in Davenport. Geez. Look at some of the uh, the tree damage that she's experienced in her yard. I, I there. think I think her husband Turner's gonna some, got some work to do. <laughs> I uh, think so too. Raking and working on those trees. Oh my! And Abram's little truck. Oh no! no. Yes. Yeah, oh you my can goodness. see the wind uh, whipping up pretty good there yeah. uh, as the storm was rolling through. So thank you, Denise, for sharing that uh, damage with us there. Very powerful winds uh, moving through. And then just to kind of recap earlier, what we saw as the storm was moving through downtown Davenport, uh, the, the dust bloom or the mini haboob, you could say almost. The mini haboob. Uh, that yeah. was moving through as those <laughs> okay. strong winds were okay. pushing through. First time I've ever seen that, at <clears throat> least here in the Quad Cities anyway. He made Jim Mertens proud because he loves that word haboob, by the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, he so does. So he'll... Yeah. he'll <laughs> <laughs> that later today on the newscast, I bet. One yep. of the things that we have not seen too much in the way of is uh, hail. Um, that's good news. However, mm -hmm. uh, with such a warm atmosphere, we have seen very strong wind that continues across parts of the area. Uh, we looked uh, earlier, we had some 100 mile per hour winds uh, knocking down trees, power lines, taking some roofs off of homes and even in central Iowa, blowing down some um, uh, grain silos. Um, 80 miles per hour is kind of the top end of our scale. If you look very closely, you can see a goes no damage, little damage, some considerable, significant, and extreme. We have had 80 mile per hour winds reported across the metro area, so that will give us extreme damage. So if you're looking out your window right now and you're saying, that doesn't look bad where I am, consider yourself lucky because many spots have seen the very strong winds and the damaging winds uh, through much of the um, morning and into the early afternoon hours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, show you the six hour loop, because one thing that I want to do is uh, you can see here, and I, and I may draw on the map a little bit, so um, uh, forgive me for some, uh, some crude artistic work, um, but this activity here, this uh, uh, straight line wind damage is heading towards Chicago. Um, this activity that you see here through parts of Missouri as it's developing is going to weaken and it probably will favor areas around Quincy. This, we're going to probably see this turn a little bit and then this cell to the south of the Kansas City area has no way of getting here because of the cool air, the downdraft wind. So this is kind of what we're going to see over the next couple of hours. Now there still are some question marks as to what's going to happen with this batch as it's moving out of northeastern Missouri. Uh, so uh, it may keep its act together. So we'll watch Macomb, Keokuk. I think you probably have a better shot at getting this storm to move into your area. So I'm going to track it one more time here for you. Uh, so this storm right in here. Um, let me grab the palette on this. And the properties is this is moving to the northeast uh, at 45 miles per hour. So uh, this, if it holds together, could be toward uh, uh, the Keokuk area in about an hour, La Harp and Macomb perhaps in an hour and a half or so. So we'll be watching that cell because that's a significant cell. And I believe that has a warning with it. Yeah, so yes. there is severe thunderstorm warnings down there as well. So we'll continue to monitor that as it moves to the northeast. James. Yeah, it looks like it is trying to steer a bit more to the east, as you just mentioned. And uh, now the question will be, I mean, 
we we show the lightning with this too. I'm not really sure, but usually when you see a, a cluster of lightning, it, that, that's where the, the, the strongest of the storm is located. So uh, I'm kind of not surprised that we're seeing a few warnings popping up ahead of that. And that could very likely expand even farther eastward. But the big question certainly, as Eric just mentioned, is the level of stability that is still going out because that cell that's right now between Kat and Keokuk, that could kind of take away some of the energy with this advancing storm that's coming in from the south and west. I mean, the, the storm energy is there, uh, but you have to look at the entire structure to see if that will hold its own and allow those uh, warnings to expand maybe as far north as around the Keokuk, probably just south of the Burlington area. But we're showing that sign of it moving a bit more east than more north. So uh, areas from Macomb, Quincy, that's why we're thinking that storm will probably cause the, uh, um, that particular storm will probably affect those, impact those towns and not so much farther north as you go. But uh, boy, I tell you, the radar has been uh, lighting up with not just with the rain, uh, but with the wind that has been going on. Uh, we can still notice or hear some of that wind just outside our station, but nothing as intense as what it was about maybe a good solid hour ago when we had those wind gusts over 70, 80, close to 90 miles an hour in the uh, media quad cities. So this is where really the strongest of winds are located, but still some substantial wind going on even near the river itself. Or we're still getting those wind gusts maybe around 16 miles an hour. Thunderstorm warnings, as you can see, still out. But, you know, we don't have to go bit by bit as far as telling you the warnings. We just know that uh, this whole line itself is producing those uh, dangerous winds that are going on. And uh, that's why uh, we want to just project to you some of the winds that has been taking place. Uh, and these are pretty accurate, especially the closer to the radar site as you go. Uh, these are pretty consistent. Farther east as you go, the radar beam coming, getting a little bit more into the cloud itself. So these may be a, maybe just a bit overdone, but not too much. I mean, it's, all it takes is uh, 60 mile an hour winds to produce some type of damage whether it may be structurally or when it comes to, uh, certainly when it comes to tree limbs and such. So um, that's why we are uh, keeping an eye on this and we'll continue to give you that coverage uh, until the threat is all said and done. I really like this, this map that you put together here. This is a 3D as far as the lightning strikes that are going on. You can see how they're really condensed right around areas from LaSalle, Peru, all the way down in Peoria, and then kind of tailing its way back into northeastern Missouri. Behind that, you know, we've been talking about some of the activity that's still going on just south and east of the Des Moines area around Fairfield. We're not seeing much as far as any, if it is any lightning, uh, just some uh, rain that, are take, that is taking place, which is certainly beneficial, certainly that we would like to see a little bit more of, given how dry it's been of late. So you can see how things are pretty quieting down as far as any lightning around the Cedar Rapids and Waterloo area. And we'll continue to see that chance, at least going into the early evening hours before we begin to uh, dry things out uh, uh, after that. Eric? Yeah, so these storms uh, could hold together and head in toward Burlington, but we uh, will just have to wait and see on that and track them back toward our metro view right now and showing you what's going on here with respect to the storms. The worst of the storms continue to push to the east now as they'll head in toward Chicago. If you're expecting anybody in from the airports there, uh, there are ground stops that are likely going to be in effect there as the strong winds continue. But for us, the winds continue to weaken just a little bit. Looking at what's ahead, all right, so what's blowing toward us right now, we're not seeing quite as strong wind. Uh, keep in mind that this is still a loft. It is still very breezy outside. We're likely going to have some 40 and 50 mile per hour winds uh, here in the Quad Cities. Now, one thing I do want to caution you about as the rain may be coming to an end, you may be thinking to yourself, all right, we need to go out and um, we need to assess the damage. Um, it's not something that is wise to do, especially when you still have 40, 50 mile per hour winds because you can still have problems with respect to trees and power lines that are still going to come down. Maybe they were loosened um, as the strong winds came and then now you're going to put yourself in harm's way. So we want you to be very careful. Uh, for friends out toward Rockford, a new tornado warning there as the uh, strongest of the cells now move to the east of us at quarter to three here in the afternoon on a Monday. So right now what we're looking at is what's going to happen out of this cell to the south and uh, east of our south and west of us right now as that moves to the north and the east Burlington. We may continue with a heads up for you. Also one thing of note 
is this area is going to be prone to flash flooding um, as we head through the next couple of hours because you're not going to get one storm in Burlington Macomb. You've got this next batch that's still yet to move in. So flash flooding could be a problem in that area that I've highlighted, whereas back here close to home, um, we're going to see it uh, drop off just a little bit here into the metro area. And once again, when we look at take the radar off, you can see that the worst of the weather is now off to the east of us. However, Kiwani Princeton Spring Valley still in a severe thunderstorm morning until three o'clock this afternoon. Latest from uh, Mid American Energy uh, over 1800 customers without power on the Illinois side, the immediate quad cities, as well as 1800 customers on the Iowa side of the immediate quad cities. Now, over 16,000 customers in Iowa City without power, mm. given all the winds that we had earlier on, the, the winds that were gusting over 60, 70, even uh, 80 miles an hour. So, we have been seeing that number slowly begin to rise especially on the Illinois side, and we can very likely will continue to see that as well. Uh, from our Davenport Eagle Eye and Top of the Cobbling in downtown Davenport, uh, nice shot, a much quieter, calmer mm -hmm. scene that we have been noticing. Uh, still some rain uh, taking place, as you can see in the distance, uh, mainly uh, in uh, Rock Island County. Uh, but other than that, as uh, Eric just mentioned, um, the worst of it here in the media quad cities is all said and done. Still maybe some pretty good wind gusts around 30, 40 miles an hour will continue on for a little bit longer. But as far as the severe wind gusts, uh, that is all said and done uh, in the quad cities. Of course, we got a lot of power outages that are out, tree limbs that are down as well. And we're likely going to be hearing more reports of that uh, as we go into our newscast coming up at 5, 6 as well as over at 630. Yes, Andrew. Got some more uh, damage <laughs> photos to share with you guys. We, see, here. people are now seeing your Andrew. Hand. Go, I, uh, yes. I go for it. I'm like the teacher's pet over here, eh? Ask, answering every question you, I can you get are, my hands on. You are on. the farthest across the studio. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's it. That's, that's one true. way of uh, improving our social distancing. That's right. That's true. I'm going to get a bell next time. I'll just tap the <laughs> yeah, yeah, little dinner bell. Sure. <laughs> but here's, uh, here's what we've got going on picture wise. Now, earlier I showed you that picture of the overturned semi. Here's a better vantage point. Uh, and this is from our own Corey Cuffler. That's on US 61. You can see the wind has pushed that semi uh, off the road and flipped it onto its side. Uh, more damage also set in by Corey. Mm. This is on oh, I 74 wow. near 7th Avenue. Uh, you can see the road sign there, a little twisted and mangled on the side of the roadway. Uh, but the next one is probably the most impressive one I've seen in terms of damage, and this is why we have been taking this storm so seriously. This was back in Marshalltown, which of course is west of us, but this is where the winds were clocked at about 106 miles an hour, I believe, at one point, ripping the roof off of mm. this uh, structure here. Uh, so very, very strong, powerful winds, especially when you're looking at a brick structure like that, uh, to be able to just tear the roof right off. Yeah, that's, that's some one, impressive yeah. stuff. One of the things that we do as meteorologists and when we go back and, and, and size up the storm and look at the damage is we look at how well built that structure was. And when you look at that building right there in Marshalltown, you say that's a pretty well built structure. Yes. You know, it's not an outbuilding that was built a century ago. Um, so when we see that type of damage, I mean, you know that, that there's more ground truth to that 100 mile per hour wind as it moved to the east. Don't forget, yeah. you can send your photos, your videos um, right to the app. The app is a great way to do this. Um, all you've got to do is just open up the app, you scroll down, and then right here, it says good afternoon to you as well. It's, it's, a, it's a very polite <laughs> app. So polite. You know, yes. and, uh, and, and so right here, it says uh, share, share your selfies right now, uh, but you don't have to take a selfie. You can, um, <laughs> but share your videos and your photos if it is safe to do so um, as we head through the next few hours. And don't forget to help out your neighbors um, and check them out too. We live in a great place that uh, has great people. And, um, and so especially if you're without power, make sure you're checking on your, your neighbors and maybe planning a neighborhood cookout as we have to take care of the, the meat that's in the <laughs> freezer. I'm thinking, man, oh man, did I just go to Costco or, or what? <laughs> James. <laughs> well, that's very true. It's always important that to help your neighbors out in these situations, uh, especially if there is any type of, um, you know, tree limbs that may be down and they don't have, let's say, a chainsaw or a rake, um, are just not strong enough to do that. That's always a, a good thing. Did that in the last storm, actually, uh, that we had uh, in the Quad Cities, uh, not just about a month ago or so. But uh, once again, these storms are, are pretty dangerous as they continue to make their way eastward. Um, the line of storms themselves, where the strongest of the winds are, just getting ready to make us way out 
of our viewing area. Still, the extent of those winds make the way as far west as, I would say, around Geneseo, maybe around the Clinton area, where we're just about, I believe it was uh, about 20 minutes ago, we had a wind gust uh, over 70 miles an hour, and that was after the line itself moved on by. So we're probably still dealing with some rain, still getting some nice rainfall. Strongest of the wind so far reported from the storm. If you not just include the immediate Quad Cities, but even farther west in the Hawkeye State, uh, you have to go to Marshall County, a small town named LeGrand, had a wind gust of 106 miles an hour. So uh, a pretty strong wind gust indeed that very likely just took away all the power uh, in that town and could very likely have done even more than that. So uh, that's kind of what we've been dealing with with this storm as it makes its way from west to east. Fortunately, folks, um, this is usually a situation that only happens once, maybe twice a year, uh, that you get a situation like this with the winds. Uh, it's even more rare that you're dealing with an area so widespread when it comes to these winds. Okay, usually you're only dealing with maybe a couple of county wide as far as seeing the strongest of these winds, but as you can see it covered uh, from this loop alone, it covered just about all of our hometowns with the strongest of the winds really located uh, that have been reported uh, has been like right around the I-80 corridor and kind of a uh, county or so north and south of that corridor. So that's where the strongest of the winds have been uh, taking place. So uh, make sure that um, you know, the worst of it is over with that you are checking that app out to see where the strongest of the winds are now. And, uh, you know, we are going to definitely have a gallery, too, when it comes to all these photos, all these videos. And we'll eventually be putting it on our newscast tonight, likely. Uh, but more importantly, do even our Facebook page. And we appreciate everyone that has been uh, giving their reports in, giving us a detailed look at what actually took place in their hometown. Got a couple of more storm reports for you as we see them right now, 51 minutes after the hour. Um, one mile south southwest of Moline near the, um, uh, let's see, this is near South Park Mall. Tr numerous tree limbs down uh, west Burlington and Des Moines County. Tree limbs across the road um, and this occurring at 1.30 p.m. Minneapolis, numerous tree branches down all over town, reports the train spotter. The emergency manager in Danville, uh, which is Des Moines County, just west of Burlington, says six inch diameter tree limbs are down. Um, and then also we've got one coming in from Clinton, five miles north of Clinton, uh, significant roof damage at radio station KMCN radio. Uh, roofing and insulation material was blown into an adjacent field. Again, that's five miles north of Clinton at KMCN radio in uh, Clinton County. Uh, so we're continuing to kind of uh, uh, look at those uh, reports as they come in, as you're looking at live storm track eight Doppler radar here, as we continue to follow these storms, which have had a history of producing damaging straight line winds. The good news is now when we look at the amount of Cape, this is the potential energy that's coming down considerably. And you can see that the storm threat at least the severe threat is expected to go down over the course of the next couple of hours. So we still have some rain. We still have heavy rain. We have lightning. We have a lot of power outages and we have a lot of you who are watching right now on your social media devices uh, because we want to make sure that we can communicate with you and you communicate with us. And that's an important thing as well here at Storm Track 8. I'm going to go over to Andrew. What you what you working on right now? Still got some uh, damage photos rolling in. These are coming from the News 8 app now, and I'll show you a couple of these that I've just arranged here coming in from Geneseo, several uh, large tree limbs down. And judging by uh, my remote monitoring system, it looks like my house is without power right now. So <laughs> hopefully Cooper can find one of his toys to keep himself <laughs> occupied <laughs> well. uh, instead of watching the television, which is usually on for him while I'm gone. <laughs> so Maybe I'll, I'll chew on this couch. <laughs> right? I hope everything's still intact by the time I get home here in a bit. But uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Looks like some strong winds have certainly moved through Geneseo. Really Look at that. beautiful. Wow. That's, that's that mothership that we talked about. That's the yeah. mothership. Yeah, that's the mothership cloud. That's Jennifer Davis from Manlius as the storm was approaching there. A lot of turbulence in the atmosphere today, and that's what gives those clouds that uh, mothership-like appearance as the storm was rolling through. So continue sending those photos in. The News 8 app is honestly the mm -hmm. easiest way to do it. It integrates right with our website so we can get it from one place to where it needs to go very quickly. Make sure and get those photos into us if you can do so safely. Yeah, I've just gotten a, uh, several emails and, and that's, you know, 
can I say that email is so 2012, <laughs> you know? Uh, so go to the app, make sure you get the News 8 app. It replaces the Storm Track 8 app, and we just love it uh, here at 254. James, uh, we're tracking this next round of, uh, of storms moving into northeastern Missouri. Heads up on that one. Yeah, I would say that's one to be concerned about. In fact, let's go and check out the warnings that are going on with that storm as it continues to make its way off to the northeast. There's Quincy, there's Keokuk, and uh, these are the storms that we're keeping an eye on. There have been some warnings with this. Uh, nothing has extended even farther north than east, so that is some fairly good news. Maybe a sign that some of the cluster of storms ahead of it is maybe taking some of the, the, the oomph out of this storm. So we'll see how that turns out. But we all we know for sure uh, that this is going to produce some pretty good rainfall as that continues to make its way off to the north and east. So uh, if you're watching us in Mount Pleasant, which is now all dry, uh, even around Burlington, uh, that may change a little bit, but I don't think you're going to argue about that. You said you want the rain, you're going to get some more rain, which is going to be awfully nice. Still some play, uh, lightning going on with this storm as that continues to make its way off to the northeast. It's about, looks like, maybe about 40 to close to 60 miles away from Mount Pleasant of Burlington. You can see the times that Eric put down as far as its arrival, the, if the uh, speed of this storm doesn't change all too much. But in the next, I would say, uh, looks like uh, 45 minutes to an hour is when that storm will be uh, making its appearance in your neck of the woods. But yeah, it's still getting some severe weather and likely that severe weather is coming from some wind gusts, maybe over 60 miles an hour. Not so much as far as any hail, not so much as far as any twisting of the wind. It's a straight line wind that can still do some damage. And that's why they have those warnings out for areas around Northeast and Missouri. We're hoping that those warnings aren't gonna expand even farther to North and east. Once again, our wind velocity showing the winds uh, moving away from the radar site, the rain droplets moving away from the radar site. And we're still getting some pretty good wind gusts uh, still from around Kiwani near Woodhall, even around uh, just west of Princeton, getting some uh, uh, wind estimates of over 70 miles an hour. And then those wind winds kind of ease up even farther west uh, as you make your way off across the river into uh, Iowa itself. Uh, of course, we've been getting plenty of warnings on tornado warning out around the Rockford area, but this is really the last of the uh, warnings that are going on in our viewing area. Uh, this severe thunderstorm warning, uh, at least for what, three more minutes or so. Yeah. So uh, that is some good news. Hopefully that will be uh, the picture. And as we do, we'll probably be able to even go back to regular programming on that. But uh, we want to keep you abreast of all the activity that has been going on uh, since the storm started in the early morning hours. Already we're getting even some more reports of wind damage and uh, even some of the wind speeds that have been going on with some of the icons that we've been reporting here. Wind damage from Elmira, the Toulon to Wyoming, that's all in Stark County. Likely had wind gusts of over 60 miles an hour. And you can see around the immediate quad cities are getting some more of those icons popping up. That's reporting wind damage. Uh, these icons are reporting wind speeds, wind gusts. You can see from Parkview all the way down uh, to the Davenport uh, Municipal Airport had wind gusts of 70 to 75 miles an hour. Around Bennett, Iowa had a wind gust of over 70 miles an hour. And then you get these little icons reporting wind damage that we had even around uh, Coe Valley. So likely in those particular areas, we've got some trees that are down or, and or even power outages that are taking place. We've had about, I think, 1,800 uh, customers on the immediate quad cities on the Illinois side without power, even on the Iowa side in the immediate quad cities, even had a report of 16,000 viewer, uh, excuse me, uh, customers in uh, Iowa City uh, without power. So uh, pretty impressive uh, from this storm that has made its way across our viewing area. Let's now, see fortunately, what the model does. It's amazing how accurate and consistent the model has because you showed this on Good Morning Quad Cities and it showed it very nicely, mm -hmm. showing that line coming on through. You know, we were a little, we were kind of questioning as far as the stability of because we had a little bit of some warm air aloft, uh, but that really weakened considerably uh, going in the early morning hours, and that's why everything was on target as far as seeing some pretty active weather uh, going into the afternoon hours around here. But you can see how things quiet down and things will be a lot more seasonal as we'll be dropping those temperatures around the mid 60s as we head overnight and then seeing those daytime highs climb around the mid 80s for both Tuesday and going into Wednesday. Still thinks it's 87 Old reports. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Old reports. Old reports. Yeah, the last report was just before 2 o'clock, and we have not heard a peep from it since. <laughs> I think we had temperatures climb as high as 90. I think heat index values were close to 100. 
So we rinsed all that out. So any showers or storms that we have going on the Illinois side, uh, or at least along and east of the river, I should say, um, are going to be ending early this evening, then quieter skies after that. Temperatures will be in the mid-60s uh, overnight. And then more mid-80s that we expect to see going to Tuesday and Wednesday. But as we make our way to the upcoming weekend, we start bringing back those warmer temperatures. We start seeing those dew point temperatures get over 70 degrees, so the humidity will be back. And then combine that when approaching front, and you got that possibility of seeing some showers and thunderstorms across the area. We'll see, hopefully those won't be severe, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on that as far as the timing and the tracking. And once again, as we've been addressing here on News 8, you can always check everything out on our News 8 app. You have the severe weather alerts, you have breaking news alerts, and even some of the videos and photos that are coming in from you folks, you'll be able to see it on our app as well. And what's even nicer too is you can give and get a future radar of how this is going to take place in the next couple of hours. And that has been extremely helpful for people, um, viewers, who have uh, seen this storm making its way into eastern Iowa and eventually going to be making its way into northwestern Illinois. And that certainly played a big role in that, Eric. All right, that'll do it for us here. It is 3 o'clock. I'm going to bed. We're, I'm, well, I'm going to sanitize all of this area first, uh, but uh, as always for the three of us, Morgan working behind the scenes as well. Thank you for trusting us with your weather coverage here at 3 o'clock. All right, these guys continue to work. We're going to have the best coverage of uh, the aftermath of these storms coming up on News 8 at 5. This is a storm tracking severe weather update.